Hi everybody, this is Joe slash CC, and today I'm going to be sharing with you how you can create relatively easily a large top-down GTA 2 style city inside of Construct 3. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump on in and see how it's done. Okay everybody, so we're going to be using this awesome tool by Probable Train on itch.io, link down below in the description. We're gonna use this to create an SVG file and a PNG file that we're gonna use inside of our game engine. And if you've enjoyed my content or you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Okay, so right away you're presented with this tensor field that's gonna be used to help drive the overall shape and feel of your city. And this is super slick. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and change the zoom down to three now you can change this to what you want it to be. However, you'll see later on in Construct, you do need to be a little bit careful for everything to kind of work based off of what zoom settings you choose. All right, so once you come in here, I'm gonna go into these various settings. I'm gonna generate everything. So underneath tensor field, I'm gonna go ahead and hit set recommended. And you know what, that looks good. Let's try that. And let's go on down now to map. So we're gonna go through and kind of generate each layer one at a time so you guys get a sense as to how this thing is working um, rather than generate everything at once. So I'm gonna hit the, on this water, uh, the generate button and let's start with what our water shape is. Okay, that's kind of a cool shape. Let's go with that. Next, let's go on to our main roads and hit generate. Um, as you can see, it didn't actually generate any additional main roads based off how far we're zoomed in in our tensor fields. That's okay, let's keep going. Next, we hit generate on major. And you can see right away, okay, it generated these two parks and all these additional main roads. And now let's do minor roads. Awesome. Okay, so we have two big parks with all these paths going between it. And we also have all these different city blocks down. Now, before we keep going, um, just know that for the parks and how those were created, it's based off this setting. And whatever you have here, when you select generate on major and minor, it will actually generate that number of parks. So that's how you can control that. But before we go on, something important that we have to do is generate the buildings. So let's go ahead and hit add buildings. All right, so this is for each of these little boxes, we're actually gonna be able to use this data to plop down a 3D plugin object inside of Construct 3 overlapping those boxes. So this is gonna be pretty cool. So let's keep going. All right, and once you've done that, you're ready to actually download the SVG and the PNG. So go ahead and do that and save it to a file or folder location on your computer. And then we're gonna jump over into the editor. And you can download it by going to the download section and selecting those two options. Okay, so now that we're inside of the Construct 3 editor, we're gonna go and import the SVG file and the PNG file to use to create our game. So the way that we're gonna do that is underneath files, you're gonna right click and you're gonna hit import files and go ahead and drag and drop your SVG that you saved from the generator tool. Once you've done that, you can hit import. And now you can see that it's underneath here, along with another, a couple other files that I already imported for testing. So now let's go ahead and replace this large uh, image with our PNG file. We're gonna use this as kind of a check. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so you'll notice that our layout size is quite large. Um, it's currently set to 50,000 by 40,000, which is pretty big. So we're gonna have a lot of places to drive around. And really you just wanna make sure that your map uh, covers at least the layout size so that you don't have any empty spots in your world. All right, so now that we've dragged in the PNG as a check, we've uploaded the SVG. Let's do one other quick edit or two other quick edits before we hit play and we see what this thing looks like. And then I'll do a code walkthrough. So underneath this little mini map area, I'm gonna replace the PNG object that's there with our PNG so that uh, we can actually see ourselves driving around on the map using the mini map. All right, so let's drag this in. I'm gonna resize it to 1920. And that's just what I chose because you can make it whatever you want, but that looked about right in the mini map. And I think I actually have it scaled down to 50% as well. So, okay. So we're now we're ready to go and we're gonna make one quick edit to our JavaScript file here so that we call the correct file and then we're gonna hit play. So you wanna make sure that this right here matches what you saved your file as and imported it as, otherwise it won't work. So with that said, let's go ahead and hit play and see what this looks like. All right, so I spawned myself right in the middle of the river, but let's go ahead and drive around and see if this did what we were hoping it would do. 
So let's come over here and do we see any buildings? Yes, we do. All right, so this is awesome, guys. Um, what you can see here is that our roads are overlapping where we would expect them to based off of the SVG file. You can see that the buildings are in their outlines based off of the data passed to us by the SVG, and we're able to drive around and see ourselves on the mini map. Um, I did implement a very simplistic mini map, so you can see on the edges, you just see black whenever you get close to the border of uh, the layout, but this is awesome. And the way that the roads are being navigated across all the SVG data is using mesh distortion. So now let's go back into the event sheet and see how we implemented this. Okay, so starting in our layout actually, rather than the event sheet, the objects that we're working with here, we have some simple roads that we have some bounding box variables on so that we can keep track uh, when we do the mesh distortion. You can see some other videos on mesh distortion up above. And I have a highway road, a main road, and a minor road. And then I also have some simple tiled backgrounds that are gonna be used for our, our various uh, other land objects. So we've got water, we've got land, we've got parks, and then I've also got this road background. So it makes it actually a nice white background on uh, the road, on the outline. So it's a little bit easier to see and pops out. Um, so that's also going to be using mesh distortion so it also needs that bounding box information as well as the rest of these because that's how we're going to actually conform it to the shape of the svg data okay now the real trick here is we've taken that svg data and we need to translate it into json for us to use uh, and act on and to create objects with so the very first thing that we do inside of our code is this map creation block and it calls out this svg to polyline JSON uh, command that we've got saved over here in mapcreation.js. And by the way, all this is posted on my itch, so go, feel free to go through it at your own pace, download it, and use it and tinker with it and make it better. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set the URL um, from this git project file URL command. And when we get that, we're going to fetch um, the URL normally. Once we've fetched that and we get the response, we're gonna put the results into this XML to JSON that parse string fetch text. Okay, so this XML to JSON is actually a special um, function that I copied and pasted in here, created by William Summers. So this was an awesome piece of code that was super useful to translate uh, this information to JSON. So what's happening here is that we're basically treating the SVG file as XML um, as an XML file, which is what it's being read in it as, and then we're translating it to JSON. Now that we have the information inside of JSON, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna push that back into a JSON object that we've created inside of our project. So in our project, you can see here um, underneath our data, we've got a few things. We've got polylines JSON, which is what we're gonna push it into, and then we're gonna go through a cleaning exercise and we're gonna call it clean, but let's keep going. So now that we've done that, we've called this get polyline uh, results and that continues our loading sequence. So let's go to that. So get polyline results uh, right away. We're going to empty this uh, JSON cleaned object. And this is what we're going to be populating from the polylines JSON. And so what we have to do is we have to go through and clean that data and make it useful for us. So at a high level, what we're gonna be looking to do is we're gonna be keying off of certain attributes that is loaded inside of that XML slash now JSON data, like the stroke width, the stroke fill, um, you know, what color it is, those type of things we're able to use to classify it as in my highway, uh, AKA that yellow that was on the map, in my main road, in my minor road, in my park, in my land, in my water, and we're gonna use all that to build out a new cleaned JSON that then we can create all of our objects with. So coming in here, uh, what we're able to do is loop through every single entry in that JSON file. And what that will allow us to do is filter it based off of its values to decide in my water, in my land, in my park, in my minor road, main road, highway road, building, et cetera. And we're going to populate that information um, into the, uh, the cleaned JSON, as well as all of the points that come along with it. So let's, let's talk about what does that look like before I clean it. 
So in order to do that, I'm going to run this in debug. And then let's copy that information over into a viewer so you can visualize what that data looks like. Okay, so once it's loaded, you can come in here in Polylines JSON, click on this, and you'll see this huge text information. So let's click on it and then copy it. And let's go over to this JSON viewer. I'm gonna go ahead and clear this. Let's paste it in and let's format it so we can actually visualize what does this thing look like? Okay, so kind of scary looking, right? But if you look at it, you start to notice some patterns. Um, you know, as you go through here, they've got points, fill opacity, stroke, stroke width. Uh, sometimes there's color and you can use this to clean it to make it into, hey, am I a road or water or land? So that's what we're looping through right now. So let's go back to the code. So as you loop through, um, I mentioned in the beginning of this video that if you change your zoom settings, certain things might get a little screwy if it works or not. And this is where this comes in. If you change your zoom settings, you do have to go and look at the viewer and find things like your stroke width value, because I'm keying off of that to see what type of road I am. And as you change your zoom, that stroke width might change. Uh, so as you can see here, I've got like, is the stroke width seven or 13? And that triggers a, if I'm a minor road or a main road. So you definitely have to go and take a look at that if you want to change your zoom. Okay, and then once I've done that, what I'm able to do is I'm able to loop through and I'm pop populating all these point data um, for each of these, but ultimately I get to the point where all of a sudden I have a clean JSON object. So let's look at what that clean JSON object looks like. Now. So if you come back now to our debugger and you come in here and you click on this instance and copy it and paste it into uh, that formatter, or sorry, into that JSON viewer. Let's clear this. Let's paste it and format. Now we have created out of that original data set a much cleaner JSON object that we can use. It's basically it's saying, all right, I'm the first entry. I'm water. This is my stroke, my stroke width, and my fill. And this is all my point data that describes my shape. And we're going to take that point data and convert it using mesh distortion into an object in our layout that matches that space. So let's go back now to the event sheet. So inside of the event sheet, I've got this loop that goes through every single one of those entries. It says, hey, am I water, am I land, am I park, etc." And it loops through and creates the object. And it places the object on the map. It doesn't really matter where. It records, after I place it, what my original bounding box limits were, because you need that to really have it distort the mesh correctly into the right location and space. And then it goes through and does some of the tricks that we've done in a lot of the other videos related to mesh distortion and it sets the mesh points using this unlerp uh, for each of those locations that we recorded as points. So we have a mesh object, and what we can do is we can set each of those mesh points to each of the points from the SVG, and it takes the shape of that object. So that's the magic of all this and making it all work. So once you do that, you can do that for each of them. Um, you can do that for your water, you can do it for your land, your park, and then the roads, it's a little bit extra tricky because you actually want to change the overall shape of the road first to the length that you need. So I'm running a couple of extra steps here that you can choose to dive in on your own time where I actually compute the length of the road by looking at you know the distances between all the different points. And I go back and I set my mesh points and then do the same mesh distortion and it conforms to the shape that is on the map. And that's super awesome. So go through here, feel free to look at it, through it at your own time and use it to create your own worlds quickly using this, this generation tool. One thing that's important to note inside of here is I have this variable called scale. And right now it's set to 45. And if you recall in our main world here, our map that we're trying to create and replicate, I have it set to 15,000, right? So I have this 15,000, um, you know, sized object. Well, because I exported the probable uh, train city generator at zoom scale of three, I actually need to multiply this by three 
to get the data to line up with this image. So instead of it being 15, it's 45. And that will actually make sure it lines up with all the roads and the buildings all land in the space as you expect them to. So coming up back now to our event sheet, go ahead and go through this on your own time. There's a lot there and that's a really meaty section, so I won't spend any more time on it, but this is where a lot of the magic occurs. Underneath here, I have some simple camera settings where I try to do some uh, smoothing on the camera uh, to follow the player and some other things. Feel free to take a look at that uh, on your own time. And then I also have a Z order where I'm constantly making sure that all of the objects are in their right order from a Z order perspective. I want to make sure that the water's in the bottom, then the land, then the park, then the road, background, then the minor road, then the main road, then the highway road, and then lastly the car. Okay, and then on the mini map, I have a little mini map here. Now, one thing that we didn't touch on yet that I wanna share just a little bit more information on is the 3D objects themselves. So if you look at my layers here, I have background, I have world, I have buildings, and buildings is the only one that I've changed the rendering mode to 3D. And do note that you do need to be on at least, I think, release 245 or six um, for this to work. I recommend just going to the latest beta, which is 248 to test this out. Otherwise, in the current released stable version, uh, none of this will work because it doesn't have that 3D plugin yet. But if you come in here, you wanna make sure that this is set to 3D and that everything else is set to 2D. And then also, if you come back to our layout, a couple things on the 3D plugin. This is our building object that we're populating. You can see that it's got these different faces, right? And what I'm able to actually do is inside of my code, I can change which sprite is on each one of those faces. So you can see here, I have these sprites that are the different sides of the buildings that I want to create. I have a short side and I have a fat side. And I'm using this so that I try to have different ratios of width to height covered by art that doesn't distort too much. So if you look at um, the code here where I do this, it's underneath the JSON cleaned for each building. And let's look at this for a second. What I'm doing is I'm actually computing each of the sides that are coming from that SVG data. And then I'm deciding which is my width and which is my height. And I go through and I decide, okay, these are my building ratios. So depending on which ratio I am, width versus height, I'm gonna create a, a certain set of art. So if I happen to be in less than 1.35, I'm gonna use my one-to-one -one, uh, ratio art. And you can see here, I'm going ahead and placing on the left face, the appropriate facade. And I do that for each of the groups. And that's what makes it look a little bit more clean as you go around in your world. So let's give this one more play. And with that said, I'm gonna wrap this video up after we go through it one more time and kind of celebrate, hey, this is, this is, this is pretty cool what we've been able to achieve inside of Construct 3. Um, lots of future ideas I have for uh, making games in this space. I did do an entry uh, for a jam I recently participated in using this and I called it uh, Extra Cheese Mafia. So I'll put a link down below, go, feel free to go and play it. You know, I pushed the boundaries a little bit and my camera motion was a lot more uh, janky than this is. So um, I apologize now if it's a little uh, distorting, but you know what? I was pretty proud of putting that together using some of the new 3D plugin features. So this is pretty awesome, guys. Um, lots of cool vibes that you can do uh, with a top-down driving game like this using the 3D shape plugin. Um, I only used Box. There's some other shapes that you can use to probably give this even a little bit more um, of a cool pseudo 3d feel like you can do the pyramid you can do some other shapes etc and string them all together but wanted to share this and post this up on itch feel free to give it a download and make your own variants using uh, this workflow so with that said everybody if you enjoyed this video please subscribe down below it's free for you to do and it makes a big difference for me give me a thumbs up put a comment down below super appreciate it with that said uh, good luck everybody and i'll talk to you soon a big shout out and thank you to all my patron supporters, James Welch, Clone13, and McCall. You guys are awesome, and I super appreciate your support. For those who are interested in supporting my patron, you do get access to all of my premium itch.io assets royalty-free to using your games. Thanks for your support.